Good morning. Welcome to Women of Courage. Our story this morning is going to be about Evelyn Mantle. The story we have is um, going to be hard for me to condense because we have so much available about Evelyn and her story is so well documented that there's just so much that could be said. Um, but I'm going to uh, let you know that there are two books that have been written about her life and they are available um, through either Hoopla, which is a um, program that's available through the Uinta County uh, Library. If you download it, you can read her book, uh, the book, the first book, which is called The Mantle Ranch, for free just by downloading it on their app. And um, that's where I read it. And then we have the second book, which is called The Last Ranch in Hell's Canyon, and it's available in our bookstore. However, we only have one copy left, and so um, I'm not sure. Ex I'm sure you can find it through Amazon. There's also availability to get the book about her, about the Mantle Ranch, through the Kindle app, and it costs about $14.99 right now. So you can also read the story through that. The story was written by her daughter, Quida, and it's really well written and beautifully, what a beautiful tribute it is to her mother. Um, I will flip the camera so you can look at pictures of her as we go. This is Evelyn. She was born in 1907 um, in Syracuse, New York. Her family moved out west and they homesteaded on Blue Mountain, um, which was a much different lifestyle than they had been had before. Her father, their last name was Fuller, and her father knew how to farm and was a farmer. They lived up there um, on a homestead that they were trying to prove out. When she was 14 years old, she saw a cowboy come through who was known as the local horse trainer and was really good with wild horses. And so she fell in love with him. She was 14 years old. He was much older than her, 14 years older than her. He had just gotten back from the second or the first world war. He had been in the cavalry because he was so good with horses, but he hated it. He hated everything about the military and being around so many people. And he was really grateful when um, he was, the war was over and he was able to come back to this area and he looked for the most remote area he could find. He wanted to be away from it everyone. And he happened to find that um, in a canyon that was about six miles north or west, I believe, of the Green River and that where the Green River and the Yampa come together. It's just at the end of the Dinosaur National Monument as we know it today. And it was remote the only way to get there was by horseback. Well, Evelyn watched him. He had a round corral that he would use to train the wild horses, and she lived near that, and she would go and watch him daily. And he um, never wanted to get married or, or have a girlfriend, and, he and she was definitely way too young at the time. And so he really didn't see her as a girlfriend, but she became a good companion and she talked him into letting him, her help him with some of the work he was doing. And in the wintertime, she would always go to Hayden, Colorado, 
where she would go to school. She was an excellent student. Her whole family would move into town during the winter time so that the children could go to school. She was an athlete and very physically capable of doing so many things. In fact, she was valedictorian of her class. But by the time she was almost ready to graduate, her mother had gotten to tuberculosis and they pulled her out of school and took her to California with the family because her mother needed a lower climate to live in. She was devastated and she got word to Charlie at this time. She was, there was a little spark going on and, and, and a little romance beginning. She had lots of young men who thought she was wonderful and wanted to marry her and date her. And that was when Charlie decided he kind of liked her and he started working towards um, seeing if he could get her to like him back. He didn't know at the time that she had loved him since she was 14 years old. Her father wasn't very excited about the idea that he was um, liking her because he was a rancher. He didn't know how to um, to farm like he was used to. And so he wasn't too excited about this man who was, well, 14 years older than his daughter. You can see why he would have been concerned. So Charlie made a concerted effort to get to know Evelyn's father, and he started to like him, but he still wasn't sure about what he could offer her. So Charlie invited the whole family to come down into Hell's Canyon, where he lived, and to get to see what kind of a lifestyle he had. This was good and bad. It turns out that uh, Evelyn loved it down there. Um, it took a almost full day for them to get down there on horseback. Very steep um, mountainous range. And Charlie didn't have a lot down there. Um, he was living in an old cabin that an old man he bought the property from had left. And he had gotten a friend of his to help him start working on a new cabin because he wanted to be able to show Evelyn's family that he had something worth um, living in. And this is the cabin that he built. Um, they worked really hard on it. They made sure that it was chinked well. Uh, the story about when they went into town to, to get the glass for the windows was quite incredible. They went all the way into Vernal. And then they had to make sure with the pack horses, he had a, a cowboy friend that was helping him, that they had to get those windows safely back to Hell's Canyon it was a 40 mile trip for them just one way to get into Vernal. And so Charlie would always train his wild horses that he had caught and use them for pack animals. And so they weren't always the most reliable animal. They were pretty stubborn and they had some mishaps in Sometimes they would fall on the ground just on purpose, trying to get free from the, the restraints that they weren't used to. And they say it was quite the trip to make it all the way back with the panes of glass, but they did do it, which is to me quite incredible. Um, but he built this cabin so that when her family would come down that they would see that he had some prospects and was capable of, of taking care of her. Um, it didn't really convince her father very much. 
he was not too excited about it. But eventually they were able to convince their dad, her dad, that they were in love and that it wasn't going to change anything. In the book, I wasn't able to find pictures of, of uh, their early life, but there was a photographer who had come down to the, the valley when they were young and he took a lot of pictures of the Fremont artifacts that were there. And when he left, he left Evelyn the camera. So there are lots of pictures that are available in the book that Quita shared that uh, you would find very fascinating. And when reading on the app, they're really easy to see and they're very um, wonderful pictures. There's pictures of their wedding day and and all kinds of things that you, that uh, you might find very interesting. So I really encourage you to get hold of the book if you can, because her life was just uh, courageous, is uh, gutsy. Um, there's so many adjectives. She was so determined to make a good life. So they were married um, in August of 1926. She was 19 years of age. It would have made him 32. And he took her home to live in his cabin. And they were so in love. Everything was great. Um, and then he had, of course, ranch duties to do. And he had to go get more wild horses. He had to take care of his cattle. So he, the first time he left her, she was kind of excited because she thoroughly cleaned the cabin. She took magazines and she wallpapered all the walls, except for the one behind the stove, which she was concerned about the cabin starting on fire. So she went to his dump heap and found all the tin cans she could find, which was a very common uh, way for them to eat in those days. He would, they would go only shopping once a year and bring in all the supplies that they needed to get through the winter. And so there were quite a few cans. She painstakingly cut all the lids from both that she, from the cans, and then she wallpapered that wall with um, can lids, which gave her the feeling that the cabin was more secure. There, her next um, project was she went around and she cleared all the brush from around the cabin because she was concerned about snakes and she wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be any snakes when she, or, uh, that could come close to any place for them to hide near the cabin. Um, when he got back, his first words weren't very complimentary. He was kind of surprised and shocked and a little bit upset that she had changed the outside. All he saw was the outside of the cabin. He was not, at first, very complimentary, and she thought her marriage was over, and she went and hid in the bunkhouse and cried and cried, and he, she thought that he would never forgive her, and he thought she would never forgive him, um, but he ev eventually went and apologized. He took, she took him into the house, and he was wowed by what she had accomplished in the house. Um, they lived in this home for many, many, many years. In fact, they had all five of their children in um, before they were built a new home to live in. She made it as comfortable as she could. It didn't have any electricity. It didn't have 
Um, they didn't even have an outhouse. They just used nature and they would go out of the house and um, they didn't build that outhouse till many, many years later. They hauled every bit of water from the creek. They were close. One of the things that she did was she started a garden and Charlie helped her. He was very helpful. He, they worked very hard together, but he was gone a lot. That first year was their, she said, the, the, the best year because she went with him wherever they went. And they had a, a, a really good time uh, with him training horses and capturing horses and working wherever he went. But she got pregnant fairly during that first year. And after that, her life became much more isolated. Um, you can see the cliffs here along the outbuildings and what it looked like in her valley. She loved her valley, but it was so isolated. Um, here's another picture of her out in front of her cabin. So she made friends with the Chu family. They were one of the closest neighbors down on the river. Um, they, it was still quite a ways from their home. Um, Mrs. Chu taught her how to cook. Uh, she went, she, the first time she went to visit them, Mrs. Chu insisted that she stay for a few days and she gave her every homemaking lesson that she could give her, trying to give her the strength to be able to accomplish what she needed to do to survive this lonely world that she had found herself in. And, and as she was um, having her children, there were times when she got very lonely. When her first baby was born, they took her into Vernal a few weeks before the baby was due and the baby was born in Vernal. The, the same thing happened with her second baby. Her third baby, they were on the way and she um, got, she started into labor and so she was had to go to the nearest ranch and they were willing to help her. And her fourth baby, she went to the Chews and the Chews, uh, the baby was early and the Chews helped her. Um, she was there visiting and went into labor and they helped her have the baby. And her fifth baby she had at home. Um, she was just very exhausted at times. She had a lot of challenges, but she just kept working at it and working at it. She built orchards and, and the cowboys from all over would come to her home to stay for a while and help because she was just so willing to share and so in need of of people to um, bless her life. Now, this is a topographical map of the area. So this would be their one part of their ranch, and this was another part of their ranch. Very, um, that's a picture of today. And... Her little boys, as she had two, let's see, I think it was two little boys and then a little girl, and then she had an, two more little boys. And her, as her sons got older, they spent more and more time with their dad um, because that was what was necessary. And so she... Um, had to do a lot of the hard work without them being there, but they were taught chores. They were taught to work hard. 
they they were determined she was determined they were going to go to school when they got to a certain age they had to go 40 miles to an um a school outside of the area stay for the winter and um then come back in the spring but the second year that the school where they had been going wasn't available to them anymore there weren't any children so she was able to get the district the school district to allow them to have school there at the mantle ranch and they built a little schoolhouse and the school district would pay a teacher eighty dollars per month to go down and teach in the school and the teacher would usually live in the schoolhouse and um teach her children for the required days of the the year they always loved the mantle children they were intelligent they were good students and they loved being there but none of the teachers stayed more than one year because I think the isolation just made it so difficult. One of the teachers that did um, help them, and they always became very fr good friends and stayed in touch with each other for the rest of their lives, but they never had a teacher stay more than one year. Um, this is a picture of her family her full family um, when they had the five children. So they only had one daughter, and that's Quita. She's the one who writes the history about her mother. This was after they had built their new home, which was so big, and the kids hated it at first. They thought it was terrible because they were away from the the water they were up on a flat so every spring they would have terrible terrible um floods and they frightened um evelyn a lot and so when she got her house but it wasn't until i think it was 1938 that they finally moved into the house so they were married in 1926. So they were in the small cabin for many years. This is a picture of the house today. Um, it's just sold recently out there. Um, the property sold. And there were some really pretty pictures of it online. And so I could grab some. But this is the original house. Um, probably with some improvements, of course. One of the sad things that happened was she really loved um, Charlie had a Charlie when he was fourteen years old, his father had passed away, and his mother passed away when he was fourteen and his he was the older of the children and the babies were adopted out or lived with other families he lived with some old uncles well one of his brothers that he was closest to would would um ranch with him but he had been in the war also and had had some injuries and through the years his anger management got worse and worse but he did find a girl who married him, and there were several times when they would come to the Mantle Ranch and live for a summer, and they became really close friends. Uh, his, his wife and uh, Evelyn became very close friends. Well, through they had a ranch down in Arizona, and there was plans for them to switch ranches. And they were going to move, um, Charlie and Evelyn were going to move down to Arizona so that they could have a road that would come to their home. And through all these years, they'd still only been using horseback to get there. Um, and just the idea of having a, a place where she didn't have to be so 
just have it so hard to get anything into the valley. But in the meantime, um, there was a, Charlie's brother got really violent. And one of the other brothers was living with him at the time. And he threatened Charlie's wife to kill, or not Charlie, uh, her brother. He threatened his wife that he was going to, the brother threatened the wife that she was going to, he was going to kill her. And the other brother shot him. Charlie was never willing to forgive that and um, estranged from his family and estranged from Lorraine, who, who was the woman that, that was one of her, Evelyn's very best friends. And so she was never able to get together with her again. It was very hard for her because she loved her so much. But Charlie actually got a little upset with women in general at the time, and it was really hard on their marriage. Somehow they worked that all out, and they built the house. They were able to get a, a wagon down the canyon. Charlie figured out a way to get a wagon, and eventually they built a road. Um, it was just amazing what they were able to accomplish and this woman's desire to serve her family and her her husband in any way that she could i wasn't able to get all the way through her story but i can't wait to read more because she is such an inspiration to me how hard work determination and desire to survive and be a survivor brought her joy. When I look at the picture of, of, of her, she was just gorgeous and happy, though it wasn't always easy. She kept working until she was able to gain a beautiful home with gorgeous orchards and a garden that produced all that she needed for her family. She was one remarkable woman. I hope you enjoyed the story of Evelyn today and we'll see you next week.